The academic staff union of universities, ASU, has promised to review the ongoing two weeks warning strike following the intervention of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Rep. Femi Bajabiamila. The National Publicity President of ASU Abeko Party, Professor Abiodun Oguyemi, made his known at a meeting with the Speaker at the National Assembly Complex on Thursday in Abuja, which was aimed at halting the strike. He said that the union would consult with its various structures across different universities in the country and get back to the Speaker early next week. Ogunyemi said it has become public knowledge that the government could not respect the 2009 agreement it reached with the union. It said the issue of integrated payroll and personal information system, EPIS, that government directed universities to be a part of is against the practice all over the world. And joining me in the studio is political analyst um, Lana Debute was with us earlier on during Plus Politics, and thank you for staying with us this evening still. Thank you, Benny. Now, what is your reaction to the ongoing strike? And it's, it's a new development now. The Speaker of the House has, has, um, has intervened somewhat, and they, they're, they're possibly looking at possibly rescinding the, the strike action, the ongoing strike action. Yeah, you know, earlier I criticized Ngige's aggressive posturing on the issue, and hailed the steps taken by the House of Reps as the rational first step towards a negotiated settlement. Good, good for the country and good for the students that the lecturers are reconsidering. Um, what I, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, um, that line, that, that little clause still challenging the method of payment of their salary is still a little bit suspicious. Yes. But it's great news that at least we are, progress has been made in the right direction. Now, what would, you, what, would you say, what would you say think might be the possible outcome? I mean, going by the meeting they might be having, do you, do you see a possible end to all of this um, crisis or just that of the EPs as it stands? A permanent end, no. I mean, like I said, the Nigerian government has lost all credibility long ago. And ASU also has lost a lot of the vestiges of um, the higher ground mentality and morality that that category of human beings had commanded um, world over. And so um, I expect that we'll have periodic waves of academic coronavirus like this <laughs> <laughs> from time to time. Yeah. And, and there seems to always be that emphasis on the 2009 agreement by, between the federal government and ASU. Mm -hmm. Why is that so potent as a stance? This is 2020, and there's always a reference to the 2009 agreement. It tells you that for 11 years, the government has lied. And if you have lied about the past, um, it leaves little room for people to begin to agitate for future, um, you know, future, future things. So this, 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 this is it. Also, by now, should probably have written off government's debt, um, you know, written off the government as a bad debtor, and literally taking the higher ground, the, the more moral ground. After all, they said the teacher's reward is in heaven. And uh, maybe that's the only way for this to end, because the Nigerian government, the timing of this strike also leaves little to be, to be derived from it, because the, the country is broke, there's an oil crash, there's an in, imminent global recession. Yes. And so to ask for more money right now, it's like asking for money from your father months, weeks after the salary has been paid. It's not going to work. Right. And just before I let you go this evening, let's talk about, let's holistically, let's look at the Nigerian education sector. I mean, the, the call for an overall, for a total reform. How, what would you say to this? Of course, it's long overdue. Um, the, if you look at private sector jobs available, it's, our education is not exactly linked to available jobs. This is why Nigerians are looking abroad for either, companies are looking abroad for either Nigerians in diaspora or Nigerians who have been able to educate themselves after leaving school. And I say that deliberately. You leave school, then you go find education, right? We're literally leaving school and then either stumbling into education as we worked and gaining experience, or we relocate physically or via the internet to sources of education. The Nigerian system has stopped really educating for quite a while, not because the lecturers aren't good, but just because the situation has simply moved from what obtained before that system was developed. So do you agree with the, with the statement that says it's not that there are no employments, but we have so many unemployable graduates because of the kind of graduates our system, our tertiary um, education is churning out. Do you agree to that statement? Yes and no. So there is nothing wrong with the graduates. Graduates aren't made fit for available jobs. Gra graduates are raw materials. They, they, it's, 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 they've been drilled. It's like when you bring out the crude oil, you don't put it in a car. 
graduates are crude oil. Before going to school, they are in the ground. Mm. Then they are drilled, they become crude oil. Then it is now the responsibility of the graduate and the system or companies to refine this into suitable products for their use. So I do not think that there is any big difference between a Nigerian graduate and an American graduate. After all, Nigerian graduates take jobs in America and do quite well. But what is then missing is the ingredient for refinement post-graduation. And that is, that's not what we've, we have here. Leonard Abute, political analyst, thank you very much for joining us on News on the Hour. Thank you so much for having me.